What is up everybody? Tegan here with High Point and today we're going to be talking about the Aperture Dobsonian Performance Upgrade Kit as well as how to install it. So if you're already looking to purchase the Aperture 88, the 10, or the 12 inch Dobsonian, the Aperture Upgrade Kit is going to be a fantastic upgrade to an already incredible telescope. So maybe you already own the Aperture 88, the 10, or the 12, so you know how great these telescopes are, then the Performance Upgrade Kit is going to allow you to just squeeze the last bit of performance out of these scopes. And if that's your goal, this Performance Upgrade Kit is the way to go. All right, so let's talk briefly about what comes inside of the box. The Aperture Dobsonian Performance Upgrade Kit comes with several items. First, you have two sheets of black flocking paper. Additionally, you have collimation knobs, a screwdriver, primary collimation springs, and cleaning wipes. And of course, our very own QR code, which may have brought you to this video. So we hope you enjoy. First, let's talk about the flocking paper. And what this is going to do is just enhance the contrast of your views. And it's gonna do this by preventing any stray light coming into your optical tube and then bouncing back into your eyepiece. Now, for those living in an urban or suburban area, maybe you have neighbors with porch lights, this is where the flocking paper is really going to make a difference. Those porch lights are gonna have stray light that come through and enter your optical tube. The flocking paper is going to diffuse that light significantly and prevent any of that extra shine from the light from entering your eyepiece. Even those viewing with a full moon in the sky should see a significant difference as well. Next, we have the secondary collimation knobs. These collimation knobs allow for a simple, fast, and easy adjustment of the secondary mirror. A properly adjusted mirror lines up with the primary mirror and the focuser resulting in sharper and more detailed views. Normally one would adjust the secondary mirror with a hex key or a Phillips screwdriver which can definitely be a hassle at night and if you're not careful your tool can fall down and hit the primary mirror of your optical tube. With the aperture collimation knobs what you have is a simple way to adjust the secondary mirror by simply turning the collimation knobs themselves. And lastly, we have the collimation springs. The primary mirror cell holds the primary mirror and it uses springs to support the weight and it allows for adjustments. Now, upgrading these springs keeps the mirror positioned correctly during and after the collimation process. Okay, so those are the performance upgrades that you can expect when buying the Aperture Dobsonian Performance Upgrade Kit. Let's talk about some of the tools that come with it. Again, it is the screwdriver and the hex key, but there are some additional tools that we think can be very helpful during the installation process. That includes masking tape and a box cutter. Now let's get started with the installation, starting with the collimation knobs. First, you want to place the scope in a horizontal position to prevent any primary mirror damage. You'll find four screws. Now, you want to make sure that you do not touch that central screw as it's going to affect the position of the mirror itself. When installing the collimation knobs, you want to remove one screw at a time and then insert a collimation screw in its place. After you've installed the first one, go ahead and do the same thing for the second and the third. All right, next up is the upper flocking material, which is going to be installed across from the draw tube. Now, it is absolutely crucial that you install your upper flocking material in temperatures above 40 degrees. You also want to make sure that you clean the area in which you're installing the flocking material hence the cleansing wipes. We recommend that you do a dry run prior to actual installation to get used to the process a bit. Rolling out that flocking material can be a bit awkward if this isn't something that you're quite used to. Now, when you are ready to install, mark the center flocking paper itself with a piece of triangular tape. Line up the triangle with the spider vein opposite of the focuser, making sure that there is less than 1 8 inch of space between the spider vein and the flocking material. Now that you've practiced rolling out your flocking paper, you want to add an additional piece of tape on either side of the flocking paper. This is just gonna help with positioning. Now 
Now you want to take your cleaning wipe and clean the installation area. Now this is very important, otherwise the flocking paper may not remain stuck to the inside of your OTA. Now once your tape is set and you are ready, peel the paper backing off the flocking paper about one quarter to one half inch and use your tape as a starting point. Press down along the edge so that the flocking paper has adhered to the tube. Slowly peel the paper backing while pushing the flocking paper against the side of the telescope. If any wrinkles form during this process, this is perfectly okay and a utility knife can be used to release the trapped air underneath. Make sure that when you are installing the flocking paper that you do not create a gap over the seam inside the OTA. If you do, all you need to do is cut it with the box cutter and then press it flat against the inside of the OTA. This will prevent air and moisture from getting underneath the flocking material. All right, now we're halfway through with the installation process. Now we have to work on the primary mirror collimation springs. For this step, you wanna position the telescope so that the back of the scope is easily accessible. Like the secondary collimation knobs, these will be removed one at a time. There are three white knobs and there are three black knobs. Behind the black knobs, you'll find the springs. These are what we will be replacing. So no need to even touch the white knobs. The first step is to loosen each black knob by just a couple of turns. Once finished, we can start by completely removing that bottom knob. Go ahead and remove the stock spring and then replace it with the upgrade. Tighten that black knob back up, but not too tight. Now you can replace the other two collimation springs doing the same process. Now once each spring has been installed, go ahead and tighten up each knob progressively until they are all secure. All right, not too bad. So now we are moving on to the final step. That's the primary mirror flocking. First and foremost, you wanna clear a flat space so you can put your primary mirror assembly aside while installing the primary flocking. We recommend performing the entire installation process with the OTA in the base so for this step, you're going to want to position the scope so that the rear cell is in the uppermost position possible. This is going to prevent any damage of the OTA once the mirror is removed as it will want to fall forward anyways. Feel free to place a towel or a rag on the resting point between the OTA and the Dobsonian base. Once your scope is in position and ready to go, mark the OTA and the primary mirror with a sliver of masking tape so the primary mirror can be reinstalled in the same exact orientation. Now we can remove the Phillips head screws around the perimeter of the scope, saving the top screw for last. Now remove that last screw and then remove your entire mirror assembly and place it in your cleared area, mirror side up. Next step, we want to clean the inside of the OTA with the provided cleaning wipes. Again, this is very important as you want to have a clean surface so your flocking material really sticks to the inside of your OTA. Now you want to make sure that you clean the OTA just past the screws that you can see about 15 inches up the tube. You also want to make notice of a seam running the length of the OTA. We're going to use this as a guide when installing the flocking paper. Again, take your time and feel free to do a dry run again just to get used to the motions. Much like the upper flocking, you want to peel off about a quarter inch of backing and align it with the seam going down the tube, leaving one inch of space between the bottom of the tube and your flocking paper. Press down and secure it into place. Slowly remove a bit of backing at a time while pressing down on the adhesive to secure it. 
There is no need to rush here, and if wrinkles form, these can be taken care of and won't affect your views. You may see some overlapping in the flocking material and that's perfectly fine. In addition to that, you may have to overlap the screws on the inside of the OTA and that's okay as well. Once you are finished, we need to reinstall the primary mirror assembly. Align the mirror with your masking tape marker, insert the screws, and tighten in a clockwise fashion a little bit at a time until all your screws are secure. All right, so we are finished upgrading the performance of your Dobsonian using the Aperture Dobsonian Performance Upgrade Kit, and it wasn't that bad. Now, you can go ahead and collimate your scope using your preferred method of collimation. So that is it, and we thank you so much for tuning in to our YouTube channel. Again, I am Tegan from High Point, and if you like this video, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you do not miss any of our future content. Now that you have your Aperture Dobsonian Performance Upgrade Kit installed and ready to go, go outside on that next night and try and really squeeze out the last bit of performance from your Dobsonian that you can. Good luck and clear skies.